everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then hello, my name is Shana Astle and I'm the creator of the DMP Diaries. So, well, without KB distracting too much, because I'm not going to be able to take a retake of this, but I am just basically putting a very quick video out there to say what challenge I am aiming to do in April. So, um if you have me on my essay inclusive fitness page i have posted that today um on that instagram and facebook i will also be posting it on my food freedom for dances page either tomorrow or thursday so one of those days so if you're following me on there um you'll see it You'll have either seen it this morning or tomorrow because this, this video is going up tomorrow. I did have another video, two videos actually, um, for tomorrow and then the week after because I'm trying to get ahead um, just because life's hectic at the minute. But they can either just not be uploaded because I'm not even sure whether I'm happy with them. But then again, it's just life, isn't it? So I kind of do want to upload them. Um, but yeah they can come two weeks after like next week and the week after so that's three weeks of videos basically already done so i don't have to think about uploading and not that i'm putting pressure on myself uploading any videos but i'm just trying to stay consistent um i've got mini goals in my head and i'm just trying to feel satisfied with ticking them off the list but anyway this video is nothing to do with that as such so today Today, I just want to basically explain this challenge, why I want to do it, how you can support in any way, and yeah, leave it with you basically, and I'll take you along the journey of the challenge with me as well. So, my challenge, if you haven't seen already, is 100 burpees every day in April, for the whole month of April, so every single day I will do 100 burpees um, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, I have to complete 100 burpees. That could be one burpee an hour. Now, I would like to get to a point, because I've been able to do it before, um, but I don't think my fitness is as good as it was this time last year or any of the previous years before that. So that's also my challenge to try and get that back up. Um, but I basically just... I'm aiming to be realistic because obviously some days are going to be a bit more difficult than others anyway. When I'm more tired, I'm still doing my workout classes, I'm still dancing, still doing university. Apart from actually next week, I break up for pretty much a month. Um, so that's another reason why I've been in limbo and then I've kind of been like, no, if I'm going to do it, it's best to do it this month anyway because I'm not at uni all day on the Monday. Um, and I've not got loads of like extra bits on top of my hand in dates that I have to do. Um, so although I will be doing uni work, I will be able to manage it a lot better than I will be in May and June and July. Um, so yeah, but basically what I'm going to try and aim to do to set a realistic goal for myself, but it, I may have to do less um, at a time, I may have to spread it out throughout the day, I may be able to do it all in one at one point, which I would love to be able to get to doing again, but I'm going to do six lots of 20 reps, um, I'm going to try and do it all in one, but like I say, sometimes I'm pushed for time, so it depends how long I take, um, but I think it'll be quite interesting to see if my time gets shorter, and um, if I could do more than 20 reps um, in each section, for example, the burpees that i'm going to do they're not jumping um just because like i say this isn't the only bit of exercise i'll be doing every day uh, and i'm doing it every day I, I did think shall i do some rest days but i think just for one month and if i look after myself fuel myself ooh, <laughs> fuel myself right and um have well-deserved baths which again i want to get into having baths so i think it will help with a lot of things um but of course if i feel like i'm burning out if i feel like i've pushed it a bit too far i will just 
make up for it in a different way but hopefully it doesn't get to that because i have done this before and it's been fun it's been fine i will be recording and documenting everything which will go up every day i will post my burpees on my essay inclusive fitness um page so make sure you're following that every week i will do the week's worth of burpees on my food freedom for dancers page just so that they both don't look the same basically and i will do the monthly overview for after the month of april is up so probably the first video in may will be the burpee challenge so that's kind of the challenge that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing 100 burpees a day. Like I say, I could do 20 in the morning, 20, mid-morning, 20, in the afternoon, 20, mid-afternoon, 20, evening. But I'm going to try and do it all in one so it's done. And I'm not going to say it's got to be in the morning. It's just going to be when I can fit it in. Um, I'm struggling to fit the gym in as it is. Uh, but I think because you can do burpees from the comfort of your own home, anywhere as well even if i'm at someone else's house or like next week if i'm at uni if i feel like i can do it there in the studio then i might do it there in the studio if i go to the gym for a workout i can still do that as a finisher like you can do burpees anywhere but the reason i've chosen not to jump is just to protect my knees and not overdo it but i will demonstrate in the first video the burpees that i'm going to do but um, so on to the charity that I want to support. Um, it's the Survivors Trust. So I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I've got it up on the laptop. I will also post the pictures that I post on my social media with the facts on, um, with the Survivors Trust tag handle, which is the Survivors Trust anyway. Um, I will pop all of the information including the gofundme page below for any kind donations and i'll speak about that um after i've spoken about the survivors trust um so <clears throat> i'm just going to i'm on the website which again i will pop down below if you want to take a glance at it but i just want to read some things that i haven't put on my post um and i'm just doing this in the moment so i just need to look to see what stands out for me for um what i haven't put in my post personally um but it says here our impact which i haven't put this on my post 120 specialist member agencies around the uk and ireland providing direct services to survivors and sexual violence i also just for me trigger warning at the beginning for all of this and in the title um so 80,000 estimated survivors supported by our member agencies in the last year throughout, through telephone and email support, counselling, support groups and other services. 800 plus individuals trained internally and externally in the last 12 months. These include those from the police, government agencies, schools, NHS staff, ISVAS, and independent students um so i might just read that like i say um you can also donate directly to the website as well um they've got a news section all of the social media which again it will be down at the bottom they've got live chat contact us um they've got bits where you can get to know who they are on their website, which I've taken some bits from that anyway for my post. Um, you, they've got different bits of support. So on this website alone, they've got um, they've got help, their helpline, they've got live chat services, supporting yourself if you need help now, um, sexual assault referral centres, independent sexual violence advisors, national helplines, so other helplines as well. Um, and then they've got like myth busting and how to support a survivor. So if you're not a survivor yourself, but someone's telling you that they've been a victim of something along these lines, then you can, um, if you don't feel comfortable with how to support them or you just don't know or you don't think you're doing enough, um, let me just tell you by listening to them, hearing them out and just allowing them to feel 
not ashamed and not like there to blame is enough anyway but the more support the better but yeah there's bits on there as well training so you could train as workshops and um testimonials and you can meet their trainers so different ways of supporting them um news memberships resources and research so there's a lot of information on there and i just want to say as well if you don't know i have a bit of a story to do with this this is why it's so close to my heart um, I'm not comfortable sharing my story, but I have realised through therapy, through my course, through people coming to me telling me that they've been through something like this and then me kind of listening to them, opening up a little bit about my situation. Um, it has helped me to heal a little bit as well, but it's also helped others to feel like they're not alone. Um which I guess this is also why I chose to do this as a charity um, as my, what I want to donate to. Kobe, you're very off-putting, you are. When I went through what I went through, I didn't know anything about the Survivors Trust. I kind of suppressed everything, if you don't know. Um, and it's all, it all came out in drips and drabs. Why does he follow me? <laughs> it all came out in drips and drabs, however, because I suppressed those emotions and everything like that and just I dealt with the short term part but I didn't deal with the bits that I didn't the bits that I felt like I didn't need to that I didn't want to acknowledge and it's kind of like at times I've relived everything again as such even though physically it's not happened again mentally it has whether that's been in dreams whether things come up that I didn't even remember close to the time um and like certain behaviors that i have now i know now through exploring it through therapy and my course that it is because of that so i just want to say yes the survivors trust didn't necessarily i didn't know anything about them um because again i wasn't doing my research i just wanted to forget about everything which if you've been like that if you are like that um that's also okay too if you're not ready to talk about it or ready to think about it just know that the support's there when you are it's not bad to ask for help that's what i struggled with i couldn't ask for help and still in other situations um i don't like asking for help and that's something that i'm working on still with my therapist and i would say i'm making progress on but um this video wasn't meant to be as blabbery as it is but we move so although i already was getting therapy and i was starting to deal with my emotions from the past and that was still in my unconscious mind um not consistently but every now and then um and i still had elements of not feeling safe and everything even though i was dealing with that with therapy still the survivors trust still their posts that I even see on social media, they still help me um, because it still allows me to validate what happened because I ignored it for so long after getting short-term help just to know that I was okay and whatnot. Um, and then I ignored it. I kind of put it in the past and acted as if it didn't happen and I wouldn't admit it to anyone that didn't know about it anyway I felt like I didn't need to anyway and you don't but then as I just started to basically in lockdown have night terrors and things I was because it feels like it was so long ago for the most part um I was just kind of like well I can't ask for help now anyway because they'll be like well why didn't you say anything straight away um or why didn't you say anything when you started to notice signs about it again and whatnot. Um, but like, for example, I saw a post, I think it was this morning actually, where on the Survivors Trust, they said whether it was last week, last year, 10 years ago, it still happened, it's still valid, you still deserve to talk about it. If you want to talk about it, you still deserve to get help if you want the help for it. Um, 
So don't be afraid no matter how long ago it was. And I am that person in that situation with anything. Something could have happened, I don't know, on a night out with a friend that's nothing even bad. Maybe they drank my drink or something and I didn't say anything because I don't like conflict, for example. Um, and then because I didn't say anything in that moment, I feel like I can't say anything further down the line. Um, because I didn't say anything in that moment. Whereas, to be honest, it, it is still a situation of, well, why didn't you just say? But it it goes below this, a bit deeper into the surface. And that doesn't, that's nothing to do with this video or this challenge anyway. But it's just another example. Like, I basically, if I don't say anything in the moment, which I very rarely do, because I'm scared of what will happen in the moment. Um, whether it's people shouting, conflict, things being awkward, uh, me looking like a bad person. Um, I then think, well, it's in the past now. So if it comes up again, then maybe I will. And then even when it does come up again, I don't. So things like that, posts like that from the Survivors Trust also help me. So even though they didn't help me during the time of the trauma being quite high and everything, I know that they, from their stories, from all, my, all of my research, they help with a lot. And also, they still help me with some of the posts that I read from them. Um, and I also know that they've helped others or they've allowed me to be able to expand my knowledge and help others too. Um, so the platform is a very good platform to support as well as just follow on social media so if you take anything from this challenge if you can't donate anything um if you don't want to share for whatever reason then just give them a follow and um, if it's not going to be triggering for you or anything and um, because again it helps you with if anyone ever comes to you with just opening up about their story to do with this um, or another friend's story for example and they don't know what to do you might know what to do from there um, or just feel like you have some sort of knowledge um, on how to help. I'm getting a very achy arm now and Kobe's moved so let's see if we can stay here. Ooh. Um, Last thing that I want to mention as well, another reason why there's so many other charities and organisations and trusts and everything that I could have wanted to donate to, these aren't the only ones but the survivors trust stand out to me as well because they have they had a they have webinars they have workshops and i'm not saying that anyone else doesn't however they have regular campaigns as well and one campaign that stood out to me again i didn't struggle with this um unless i disassociated which i know that i've disassociated a lot um but my gut's telling me I didn't disassociate on this part because I just wanted to know I was okay. They could have run any test on me and I just, although it felt uncomfortable, I just wanted to know that I was okay. Whereas I know others probably have different views on it. But they basically got, which again, I'll link this actual link below as well, NHS London, check with me first which basically i'll read it off so i don't get the facts wrong or anything but nhs london has commissioned us to run an awareness campaign which will provide healthcare professionals with resources for treating potential survivors or of sexual abuse giving them the tools and knowledge to confidently engage with and best support these patients and people under their care we are collaborating with the nhs our london survivors forum for him and i really can't read i'm so sorry um and our member agencies to use our combined reach and experience in this field to put together our program from the perspective of nhs practitioners we heard that sexual abuse remains a taboo among many healthcare professionals and they often lack confidence when dealing with situations with survivors feeling that they may provide an inaccurate response through our campaign we want to help change this i did watch a workshop um on this i think it was on the sexual awareness and assault um awareness week and um from what i got from it so basically like i said i didn't have this as a challenge of mine 
um, because I was so fixated on I've got something wrong with me um, and I wanted to make sure I didn't and if I did I wanted to be treated which thankfully I didn't have anything um, and I consider myself to be lucky with that but um, yeah so I understand that even years down the line um, whether they've been through therapy and they're okay they get no other triggers or no other challenges or anything like that obviously when women for example get the smear test um any other tests that are down there or even even men as well even like just normal vaccines for example they basically trying to just make it easier for people that have been through these situations and these unfortunate events to have control because they lost control before basically they had no control and whatever happened to them happened to them um and yeah obviously they're just trying to help practitioners um to be able to do what they need to do but give choices out to explain what's going to happen um to allow them to have control to even sometimes explain what's going to happen before they even get to the appointment so if they don't feel comfortable they can bring someone else in to help them with any anxiety or anything um and also just give them a choice to opt out because if you're not ready you're not ready and i know certain vaccines or screenings you've got to have but at the same time that could be detrimental to someone's mental health um so it's just it's just working together as such and just making it as comfortable as practitioners can to support any survivors anyone that's gone through any sort of assault um and are dealing with trauma have dealt with trauma and um, anything like that and i just think that's one big reason why it stood out and i've i've gravitated towards the survivors trust more and like i say i follow them on instagram and they the posts that they put often help me even if it's helped me to be educated a little bit more i my story is different to the next person and also i don't know everything about it like I say, I shut off from it for quite a while and things are coming up now. Um, so yeah, that is basically what this challenge is all about. And if you have any questions, pop them down below. All links that I think are useful will be down below. Um, the GoFundMe page will be down below. My Instagrams where I'll be posting will be down below, but I will post an overall video um, of each day. Hopefully it won't be too long. I'll try and condense it as much as I can um i'll time lapse it as well it won't be all in full speed and um, you'll just have to trust me that it's 100 um but yes i will be completely honest as well i have put a challenge to raise 100 pounds i would love to do more but like i've said before there's so many things and ideas that i have that i want to do for charities and i just don't fully believe that I'll have a lot of support and I don't know whether that's it just because I don't know I don't know whether it's an insecurity of mine um I just don't know whether it's because people I think people will rather go directly to the charities which either way it's not about me I'm just going to see what I can raise ideally I'd like to get to 100 pound of course it'd be a bonus to get to way more the more i can do the merrier so any one pound 50p 10 pound whatever you can donate if you can if it's not too much for you then please do another thing that you can do without donating is sharing on your social media so hopefully i can raise 100 pound but we'll see where we get to in just over a month's time and yeah thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video um throughout the workouts as well i will be wearing as much l obsession as possible because it is a brand that i love wearing anyway um and i have multiple outfits 
too so i will always link them down below as well but yes this charity is very close to my heart although i'm not ready or don't think i'll ever want to share my story on the internet um talking about it does help me and just letting people know that i'm also here to listen and support in any way and i do have empathy for people who have gone through any kind of assault uh, experience any trauma any violence as well that's been thrown their way no matter whether it was 10 years ago 20 years ago or one year ago a week ago i'm sending out so much love just remember that there's nothing wrong with asking for help um although i struggle with it myself i just want to remind you because i think if i'd have asked for help a lot sooner i'd have in lockdown basically wouldn't have experienced any night terrors or worrying when i'm out um on nights out and things like that so i hope this video made sense i hope it wasn't too waffly in my eyes it was gonna be a three minute video so far it's looking like a 20 minute video i apologize about that i know my videos are very long let me know also if you like the long or short um i may put up the video that was meant to go up tonight next week i did record it a good few weeks ago now so i don't even know if i'm happy with it but we'll see look out for next week's video either way if you're not already subscribed please do subscribe if you feel that my content will be valued to you in whatever way um i am a dmp in training dance movement psychotherapist in training and um i want to take you along my everyday life journey really but i won't be posting every day no time for it Thank you.